Well then, my friend, I'm going to be completely honest with you. This new you, this no drinking alcohol, no smoking weed, eating vegan food you, is freaking me out a little bit. And vegan food, dude, it's not even food. Seriously. I mean, if you've been talking to Lee Green Shields, don't listen to him. But, I mean, this isn't where I thought you'd bring me for a holiday in between seasons, but it's been perfect. A little quiet retreat, a bit of meditation, a lot of chill out time. A time to reflect and... I think I've needed that. I need to clear my mind because this season's going to be it's going to be tough in a way because losing out the squad. I don't really know what I'm doing in this country. I'll be completely honest with you. And we've only been here a short time, so you know I've got no scouting knowledge, nothing. I needed an idea, and I've had an idea. I'm definitely had a moment of enlightenment, and I'm going to try something I've never done before. And we're going to find out if it works when we get back to the office. But I'm still waiting for all this to crash and burn. At some point, you're going to get smashed. I know it. Yes, you are. I don't think prison taught you anything, my friend. I know you too well. Anyway, holiday's over. Let's get to business. Hello and welcome to episode two of The Road to Anywhere. As always, thanks for joining me. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, get involved in the comments, subscribe if you're new. And if you really want to help my channel out, you can always become a patron. I just want to thank everybody who checked out episode one and had a look at what me and my CCPO got up to. And hopefully we're going to get up to a lot. These series I adore because I learn about world football. We go on adventures. We've got places we've never been. And you never know where that road is going to take you. That's why I call it the road to anywhere because you can literally go anywhere. But right now we are still in Indonesia. We're about to start our first official full season. Um, but I thought I'd check this page out because it's the Indonesian Cup. Of course, we got beat in the semi-final. And a great comment by a subscriber of mine who is from Indonesia who said... That goal that knocked us out was a match fix. It happens all the time. I wish I'd have said that now myself. Um, but the team that did beat us with a match fix went on and won it. But look at the history of it. Weird. And also I didn't mention it. And I didn't know it to be fair. Um, but the competition didn't take place in 2020. And I'm guessing that is because of COVID. Um, obviously our arch rival or one of them, our main rival, won the league last year. But it didn't take place in 2015 either. And I don't know why. So again... Anyone from Indonesia want to enlighten me? I also mentioned that we play in the capital city, Jakarta, and I'd learned that they're moving that capital at the cost of 35 billion US dollars. So I've been speaking to one of my Indonesian subscribers just to find out why. Um, and apparently it was a city that was built by the Dutch. It's just been built up and built up and built up and it's too big. Um, and the government want to move all the administration to somewhere new and they're building a brand new capital for those reasons, for the embassies as well in Borneo. That's just a little bit of knowledge for you there, but you know, we've got a season to get through here. And like I said, we were losing half the squad. And one thing I've noticed is a lot of the contracts in this country, and a lot of the contracts when you renew them, they're at different times of the year, but they're also usually only for like a year or two. So there's going to be a lot of players out there available on freeze, but also the transfer values are so small. So if you've got half a million quid in Indonesia, you can, you can buy a team. But what kind of team could I buy? I had no scouting knowledge. My staff isn't great. Um, I've got natural knowledge from the club itself. So this and the scouts must have done some of their own work as well. So I had a little bit there. Um, but honestly, I was sat for about an hour or two thinking, what am I going to do here? I, I don't know what to do. And then I had an idea and it kind of worked. So I went through every single player in the national team. If the contract was coming to an end, I offered them one and I put a bid in for every single player in the first team and the under 23 teams, right? And every single bid was like 25 grand, 42 grand, 58 grand. Every single one got accepted. Even the star striker, I think that was about 100 grand. That was a maximum. He was accepted. But of course, we're not the biggest official club at this moment in time. We might have a lot of fans, but we've not got that reputation. And I'd say 60, 65, 70% might have just instantly turned me down. But the rest of them didn't. So I basically made sure everyone was signed back up to a new contract that I wanted to keep. Um, some players were already leaving on transfers, like the goalkeeper and a few others. Some players I didn't rate. Um, so I just made sure I locked in, just in case this didn't work, as many players as possible. And then I signed as many players as possible. And then I looked at my squad and went through it and went, right, Play there, play there, play there, play there. As best to my ability, we're a bit weak at right back. Um, and put together a team. Now, because I did all my business quite early, 
it's on last year's transfer page. Well, this is this year's transfer page. And as you can see, quite a few players have left. Players I've put up, they've gone to other clubs. It is what it is. I've signed a left back Brazilian off a scout report the club already had. And then the majority of my transfers, like I said, all Indonesian nearly, apart from one, um, went through. Look, 87 grand, 81 grand, 80 grand, 78 grand. 16 grand these are all national team players either in the in the youth teams or the first team um but there's one player i 100 happy with and that's simic now i wasn't able to get rid of him he's just been dropped down but it opened up a foreigner spot and i had a scout report already for a brazilian now i'm calling him alex i could attempt his second name but i'm not going to uh, he's 31 he's got a lot of experience in this country and i felt like on paper he was better than Simic. He's been around this country for quite a few years. He's been out to Malaysia though, came back, and he's not really played too much apart from when he played for Pasela, Pasela uh, in Indonesia in League One a few years ago, and not too long ago, he scored quite a few goals. So I didn't know how he was going to work out. <laughs> sometimes you have a shot, and sometimes you score. You've seen I've spent a bit of money. We had quite, we had a bit for this country. I'm now realising. Um, and I was quite settled on the squad. I did struggle at right back. So the, the lad from last year, from Nepal, who can cover there, is pretty much going to play there most of the season. But I was okay with that because I was just chuffed to bits. I was, I was, I was able to bring in so many players. So I've still got Meikan Konate, or however you say his name. <laughs> I'm bad. Uh, we kept the lad from um, Nepal, uh, Chand is called. Uh, Simic is down the bottom. Motta, the right back from Italy. I was going to try and keep him. He's 35, but he's very good. He didn't want to stay. He's left, um, which is very, very annoying. Uh, now, like I said, some of these contracts are weird. So they go from December to December, but some go from March as well. Um, so there's going to be a couple of good players here that I learn are good players for me throughout the season that don't want to renew again because we still haven't got that reputation. So I, I am going to end up losing a couple more as the season goes on. But this lot are now locked in and I'd love to show you all but it takes ages doesn't it it does take ages so I, I, I feel like if we get to a point of the live con what I'll do is I'll show you my best 11 I mean I just want me to be competitive in the cup we'll see what goes on with that and getting the top half of the league just slowly build them back up I mean they were once a, a they are I think the biggest team I think they've got the most fans anyway. I mean, you see that when you go to some away games and we have 30 odd thousand at our games and then you play the next game away and there's 300 fans. So, you know, there's a bit of a difference with a lot of these teams. Um, but that was what gave me the best shot. But kind of going into the unknown here, like, will this work? So because my other tactic didn't work too well in the first two games, even though we created a lot of chances, we didn't win any games. Uh, and then I switched to this and we seemed to just turn into a different team. I was going to stick with this and I've tried to form the squad around it. Staff has been a little bit annoying um, because we've got more coaches than I'm allowed. I've been asking to expand that to at least try and get it to five. So then I could maybe get rid of a few and get some better ones in, which there are available better coaches out there. Can't sign them. Um, all I was able to do was bring in a physio and the rest of it. I just thought, let's just leave it. One thing that gave me a little bit of hope, though, and I slagged the odds off a lot, was when I looked at this, the Indonesian League One season review and was like, we what? We're favourites. Really? I have never done this in my life. You could not do this in England or Italy or Germany. With You'd need such an, an insane transfer budget to be able to go to a national team and just put a bid in for every player and get them all accepted. Like I said, a lot of them said no, but a lot of them said yes. And again, you're looking at it and thinking, really? So I had a lot of hope here. Can we go and do something? When the season started kicking off, and I think we brought in something like 16 players, all the other teams are doing the same. And again, if you know how this works, it's like everyone's on short contracts. No one wants it more than a year or two years. And I don't think that's, is that a thing in Indonesia? I mean, it makes it interesting. Everyone's like resetting every year. So not only do I not know how we're going to get on, you don't know how everyone else is going to be. Our Persib, the champions, our rival is going to be as good. It's going to be a team come out of nowhere. So we are about to start the season at this current save point. And obviously I was doing a lot. I was up to contracts and all that stuff and, and writing lists down, make sure, try to flesh out my squad. So I left um, pre-season in the hands of my assistant and we were getting closer and closer and closer. And he wasn't doing anything. So I just felt like we needed some games. So I organised three games against localish teams that are not very good just to give my boys a run out, especially my new ones. And the first game of the season was going to be against the team that knocked us out of the cup. So I just could not wait to get going. 
So let's find out what I did. So we've now jumped forward to the 1st of August. And at this point, I played 14 games and the bookies weren't wrong. And that Alex... Ooh, this is what I love about levels like this. You get a player like that who would not do anything in the European League, probably. It's like he's the Indonesian Ronaldo. And I'm talking about old school Ronaldo. Do you know what I mean? The Brazilian one. And we started great. Absolutely amazing. 3-1 win. Midori United. 3-1. I think they're the team that got to the final last year against Bayankara and got beat. So we've beaten the cup finalists. A 3-1. A 3-0. A 6-3 against a team we should be beating. I'll be honest with you. Borneo, where I think the capital's going to, we got beat. And at this point, I was like, oh. Rode me luck a bit. We've been good. Feeling undefeatable. Got beat. Uh, bounced back with a win. Then we got beat off Barley United. 2-0 things happen but then I just went on this amazing run look at this up until we played our arch rival Perseb and drew 1-1 it also started off well in the cup and the first few rounds of the cup it seems to play lower level teams so I was giving other guys a game I mean a lot of these names don't mean out to you um, but this is a B team of mine and they still won 2-0 you can see Alex has played amazing uh, I've got Raf Rafley I call him uh, he's a backup striker my other backup striker is Ricky Kayami I apologise, Indonesian people, and the rest of the world for my pronunciation. It's shit. Um, but he's been like a backup. He's played really well as well. Um, I've got a left winger called Hay, who, Osvaldo Hay, he's played a lot, been really good for me. He wants a new deal. Tony, the centre half, wants a new deal. So the, this is the thing. A few of them have just won't do it. A few of them have signed new deals because um, I don't know what, what's going to happen with my career. So I want to safeguard my good players in case we go into the next season. Right then, I've now jumped forward three months. It's the 2nd of November and we are still top of the league. Now by five points. Um, I've lost four now, drawn three, 120. Alex is still the top goal scorer by a country mile. Third best player now. Um, but he has played quite a few games out on the left. He did have a few knocks. It's like anything sometimes, when you get into that last, latter part of the season. You know, you start getting a bit of fatigue with certain players. You have to rotate a little bit more. You get injuries and so on but we've still been fighting through and, and been fantastic for the majority of it in the league. I, I honestly, absolutely loved it. Highlighted the last game you saw uh, against our rivals, a 1-1 draw. Um, and then again, just went on a great run, not getting beat. This was a patch um, where we started to, you know, get them injuries, get a bit of fatigue. And you can't, you can't win everything. It's quite hard to be invincible. I mean, I've done it in the past, but you need a well-oiled machine and I don't think we're completely well-oiled. I've got a guy playing out of position at right back for the majority of the year, but he still does well. So, you know, we lost a couple of games, but we've done really well. Beat our rival there, 3-1. Look at that. And I remember, specifically remember, after the game, when they do the interviews, their manager was like, it hurts. So watch them celebrate on that pitch. Hurt. Well, it went over between us two, I'll be honest with you. But quite a few games left to play. Only five points in the league. We can have shaky moments. But can I win this championship? And I'm just going to jump straight to this point because this was awesome. I'm not going to lie, but it is long and it can affect you. And it also makes me think, you know, we're not in any kind of Asian tournament either, are we? Continental tournament. So maybe that's helped. I think it does sometimes. When you're over in Europe, you're not playing any kind of European football, but you've got a good team. You have less games. But this, obviously, you have the first round, second round. And once you get to the third round, it's all double-legged. So obviously we got through the third round, got through the fourth round, got through the quarterfinals against our arch rival, which the manager kept moaning about, and got to the semi-final, bossed that first one, 5-1. So I B-teamed the next one. We got beat, but who cares? I mean, we got through. And I'm into the final, but I wanted to play a big team. We'd already knocked out our rival. That would have been a better final. Let's check in on that squad. Again, arranged by average rating. And look at Alex, 13-30. Like I said, the Brazilian, we've turned him into the Indonesian Ronaldo. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously now I've played a season, started to get to know some of the lads. Uh, you get to know how they play. The tactic really works with them. And like the majority of the time we play well, even sometimes when we're getting beat, we still we still create a ton of chances. So it just happens in football sometimes. You can't always win, but yeah. Can we go on? Can we do a double? Or oh, will I crash and burn? Because like I mentioned in the last one, if you watch my Essential series, they had a bit of bad luck in cup finals. We've now jumped forward to the 3rd of December, and yes, we are champions with one game left to play. Um, six points clear. Should have been more. I'm going to be honest with you. 
We haven't steamrolled the end of this season at points I thought we were going to bottle job it. Again, I think it's a bit of fatigue. Things that were working, I don't know. Football, in it? it? It got worrying. Let's check in on them fixtures, all of them together. It's a lot, you know, it ends up being quite a bit of football with all them bloody rounds if you get deep into that cup. But look at the end of that year there. I mean, drawing, winning. We got beat off the team. <laughs> I've got to play in the final, so that is worrying a little bit. Uh, Borneo beat me, we drew. So I just dropping points, dropping points, dropping points, thinking, shit. But if the other teams can't win their games and catch you, then tough shit. But I want to show you my best 11, I think, on paper, before we get into that final quickly. Now, this lad is an international goalkeeper. Our last goalkeeper was an international goalkeeper. Um, now, you'll see his contract is about to run out. So I do need to sort out some of them in case we carry over. But he's been all right. This is me right back. I mean, on paper, these lads are like... I mean, what kind of level of English football is this at? This is my left back. And you know, I'm not going to try and say the names. You, you can read, I'm sure. I'd love to hear what you think. I think at this level, he's brilliant. This is my first centre half. Again, Indonesian, 27 years old. Um, used to play for us. Obviously, I've signed him back. I mean, there's a, there's a, let me know if you're from Indonesia. There's a lot of players just jump, 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 jump because of these short contracts. Tony has been my other major centre-half and he is 36, though. But I would have kept him. My defensive midfielder, another new player, was... Uh, I really want to try and say his name, but I'm not going to. But again, I think he's a good player. Now, this guy's been brilliant in the middle. And again, on paper, mentally an amazing player. Um, he's currently injured, though. So he won't be playing. And Maycan as well, who won't sign a new deal. And his contract's about to run out. No one's coming for him just yet. I wanted him to. He says our reputation ain't big enough. Now, like I said earlier, Alex has played a bit on the left, but when he hasn't been playing on the left and he's been up top scoring tons of goals, Osvaldo Hay has been playing. I know he's a right winger, but he's done really well on the left. And again, he's leaving. Another big loss for this final um, is my right winger, Rico. Yeah, injured. So, you know, it's not going to be my number one team in these games. You've already seen Alex, so you know he's what he looks like on paper. He scored a lot of goals. This is the guy we brought in um, as his backup, and he's played quite a few, he's scored, he's set up a few. So welcome to the first leg of the final, and I've had to cobble a team together. Kiyame is going to go out today. He's not fully fit. I've got a backup central midfield. One of them isn't fully fit, but this is where we're at. So hopefully we can bust through this 4-4-2. And lay a foundation for the second leg. So here we go. Alex kicks the game off for us. Again, when I have a star player like an Alex, I always hope they can show you what I've seen on multiple occasions throughout the season. When it comes to the live com, but live comes, you can never predict what's going to happen. And I mean, a lot of finals can always end up a bit boring sometimes. So I'm hoping for some entertainment. It'd be good if it went down to the wire. I love a bit of entertainment. I like, I like that thrill of this game when you're on the edge of your seat. But then there's also part of me who would just like to do it win a trophy, be a double winner, and set a good foundation here because this league isn't ranked very high, I'll be honest with you, not in Asia. So even though I might potentially be a double winner, I'm at least a, I'm a champion already. <laughs> um, I don't know how good a, a good a thing that is on your CV in the wider world. Oh, 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 oh. Penalty, Alex will be taking it. Now, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say he hasn't missed one this year. I wasn't going to say it he would have missed it oh great start great start and what a start to this series thank you uh to everyone who watches it's not the time of year this game's it's most popular and i i just love this little adventure series of mine that i do every year um, and i love you guys for giving me your view i know i ask for subscriptions and patrons and thumbs up and comments but the view is the most important thing you sitting here listening to me chat on is my favorite thing oh he's threaded it through kiyami oh they are not the biggest team. They're not a massive club. They've got to a final, but they did beat me in the league. And this isn't my number one team. I think going in, if I had all my players fresh in the, the positions I wanted them to be in, especially my central midfield, them two together have been awesome. Like a real engine, just driving that team forward. And then having Hay and Alex up top and all the others. At times, I mean, you, 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 I've said this a lot, but you think to yourself, oh, it's a crap level. But everyone's a crap level. Everyone's at the same level in this league, pretty much. So you still watch some good football. You still see some mistakes, but you can still see some good football. Right, here he is. He's leaving us and he's ballooned it. I don't know how I thought of it. I just thought, what, what have I got to lose here? I was looking at the values of the players in the national team. Just thought, 
we try it? And every time you put in a bid in, they're worth 26 grand or 50 grand or 80 grand. They're like, yeah, we'll have that. I'll break it down a little bit. Okay. All right then. No worries. Easy peasy. I bet there's a lot of interchanging. Could make the league quite interesting. Licks. Some player, man, in this at this level in this league. Right, it's Chand. More of a midfielder, but he's played really well at right back. I do love that. I do love it when you put a player out of position, but they still do you a job. Adore it. It's Sydney. Puts it in the box and come on. So it's our time. We've fallen a lot. I think the second leg might end up being one of them condensed versions where I just pop in for the replays because I think we've got a great chance here. Yeah, one thing that always fascinates me when I do um, travel around on a series like this is when I go to a random country like Indonesia because it's it's random to me being from England and it's not a place I've ever... And I've played this game for over 25 years. Oh, hey, this is easy. I haven't done a shout out. I've not done a thing. I'm just sitting back having a brew. You've got to be careful with beer around here. This is a Muslim country. So, you still get your hands on some. Not that my CCPO has been drinking with me. Drinking alone is a bit morbid. I'll get him back on it. I'm sure he's going to fall off that wagon soon. This clean life of his, it can't go on. It can't. And I'm sick of making two teas because I am not eating vegan food. I have to make him a separate meal. We tend to shy away from these places. I know a lot of people do. And then the amount of comments I get when people saying, oh, this series inspires me to do it myself, to go out there at this time of year because I'm bored, but I want to play the game. I can't, I always say this every year, I can't recommend it high enough. Osvaldo giving, giving us a show on his farewell. Well, nearly farewell. But it also fascinates me how people who don't normally comment, comment. Sit, and I've had, I'd, I'd have at least three from people from Indonesia. People in Indonesia watch. A man in England play this game. It fascinates me and it's happened a lot. And I've made good mates with my subscribers from around the world from doing series like this. Um, so, you know, if you never comment, comment. I chat to everyone. They always answer my comments eventually. I like to leave them a bit of space and then I'll go, I'll go through them. I'm a massive NFL fan. And I love that squad rebuild every year and I've had saves like that in the past and I do like it. If you went into it every season, completely rebuilding and not knowing if it's going to work. But the minute, this has worked. So the second leg, let's squeeze that down a bit. So here we are now at their place. Um, looks like a decent stadium. For the second leg, I'm just going to condense this down. If we score or they score, we'll jump in for the replay. Devastated that some of the players that have got me here and won the league can't play in this final, but it's an unchanged side. So it's half time, and I'm going to be honest with you. If you look at them stats there, you'll think, you know, it's quite equal. They've only had one shot on target. That one shot on target, I thought had gone in, and we had like a last minute goal line clearance. They've generally played better, they've scored. They've scored. I just made five changes because I thought with what, 15 minutes to go, let's give guys a game. This is in the bag. But they've gone 1-0 up and they've scored again. It, Ronaldo has scored for them. It's like my lads have just switched off. Like they've got their hands on that cup already. I'm not happy with this. I'd give them an Alex Ferguson style bollocking even if we do win, which we should win. Well, there you go. The six goals in the first leg was enough. Maybe, we, you know, we didn't play well. We didn't really do a lot. It was very exciting on our side but you know six goal cushion it was a lot for that team to come back and they played very well fair play to them they played well at their own stadium scored two goals and beat us but i'm a double winner baby two trophies great way to start my career so this is the last game of the season i've just played it right now i just did a full squad rotation on the cup final teams um, and the last did me proud look at that so it's official we are a double winning team i'm a double winning manager and you're a double winning CCPO, I always say this, but that cone placement this year was fantastic. Maybe it is you being off the booze and the meat that's helped you kick yourself onto another level, a level I didn't even think existed, mate. So thank you. We've done it. What a great way to start our career. It's always good to see what jobs are going. Have a look at the job market. There's a couple there that are quite interesting. I'm not going to lie. One thing that's annoying me though is it says rarely communicates directly with players and I very rarely do that. This year I've really gone for it. I've really talked to him after games and during the season. That's bullshit. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Swear down, mate. That tastes even better now. We're champions, double champions. You can have one. You're a loser. You want to taste the victory in this bottle, I'll tell you. Amazing. What a season. What a season. Wait a minute. I'm getting a Zoom call coming in. From Christian Peter. What does he want? Who's Christian Peter? Yeah, 
a former owner of Manchester Central, a former boss of mine in a former life in a former Booty-verse. I better take it, eh? Hello, Christian, Peter. I'd like to say it's a pleasure to see your face again, but it's not. But what can I do for you? Good. It's fantastic to see you. Things have been great. As you know, I sold Mad Central for an absolute fortune. I mean, I can't even tell you how much cash I have. I mean, I could, but I won't. But it should be illegal how much I sold this club for. So look, you know, things are great. I mean, better than you. I mean, I heard you lost all your money with uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Sorry. Cool joke. Um, but look, for me, it's wonderful. I'm out in Jakarta. I heard you're in town. I'm looking for locations for hotels and casinos. And I heard you're back in football. So I thought, you know what? I wasn't eager to do this again, but with, you know, dudes doing it, there's got to be something good to be done. I figured it's a great opportunity. Get the boys back together. So you know what? I've sent Gruno out, Gruno out there. He's negotiated some killer terms with your club. And this time tomorrow, dude, just for you to get you out of the situation, I've taken ownership. So that's right, dude. From tomorrow, 24 hours, me and you back together. Dude? You there? Dude? What am I doing? I'm texting our current owner while he's still our owner and handing in our resignation. We're off, mate. Why? That was Christian Peter. He's just bought the club. Tomorrow morning, he will be officially our new owner and hell will freeze over before I work for that man ever again. We need to get away far, far, far away. I'd rather stick a rusty nail through my right bollock than listen to him again. Can't handle it. So get your bags packed. We're hitting that road, my friend.